Oh, yes, no. Damn. Oh, I'm sorry. Gina. I hope that wasn't too important. No, it's nothing I can't put back together again in maybe five or six hours. Good. <laughs> so, guess who's back in town? Uh-huh. Did you miss me? How could I help but miss you, Gina? I know what you mean. I missed you, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I wondered where you disappeared to. Well, I don't like to make a big deal out of it, but every spring I take this scientific pilgrimage to the meccas of discovery. And where did your pilgrimage take you this time? New York City. I had a very interesting meeting at the Museum of Modern History. Oh. And I managed to drop by the Smithsonian Institute. I always find it fascinating, don't you? You know what I find fascinating? The Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Right. Yeah. Well, they've opened an annex, a little Smithsonian boutique on Madison. <laughs> so, uh, what's new and exciting in the uh, vaccine business? Alex, three companies. Jeffrey, say hello to the lovely lady who just returned from a very rewarding scientific sojourn. Hello, Jeffrey. Dana? I don't want to bore you with any tedious business details, okay? Oh, I find details fascinating. Mm -hmm. Especially when they involve a scientific discovery like your vaccine. Well, if you're that interested, you know, why don't I tell you all about it over dinner tonight? Well, I was thinking that maybe we could have lunch, and I don't mind hanging around waiting. No, 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 no. If I were to have lunch with you, I wouldn't be able to concentrate on anything for the rest of the day. <laughs> Until tonight, okay? What's that? Maybe now you can read better. It's a copy of a formal complaint that my lawyer is filing against the city for false arrest. Well, I, you know, I tell you what, you tell your lawyer to go out and have her baby and then get off my back, okay? I'll tell you what, punk. You resign, I'll call her off. <laughs> you know, before you come down with a bad case, the machos here, you think you're some big hero above all us mortals can't make mistakes, but we're blowing us all out of proportion, you know? You're out on the streets, everything's copacetic. What's the big deal? Oh, Timmons, I know that you don't believe it's a big deal. I know you don't give a damn that I sat in that prison for almost a month. That my son was without a father the entire time because of your underhanded tactics. Wait, 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 wait a second. Let's go just uh, You were in jail because of my underhanded tactics? And I'm gonna make sure the people of Santa Barbara know exactly what kind of a corrupt, morally bankrupt scum they've got for a district attorney. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of garbage thrown at me by your attorney and other friends. They called me a whole lot of names because I was doing my job. Here you come in here with this Jack Armstrong routine. You go ahead, you sue me, okay? But remember two important facts. Number one, Cruz Castillo, your dear friend, was the one that came in and found your boots that linked you unquestionably to the attacks. Number two, Cruz Castillo, your good friend, arrested you and brought you in. So, I mean, if you want to drag him down into this muck that you're raking up, it's fine with me. I mean, so, I mean, what, he's your, your friend. I mean, he's a, a little distraught having some problems because his loved one just blew up in the plane. <laughs> so, who cares? Don't be easy on him. But get out of here. Call your attorney and tell her I'm ready anytime she is. There must be some easier way to make a living. Oh, yes, Mr. Castillo. I don't think we'll have any problem whatever. I have a number of clients this place would be just perfect for. Are you looking for a quick sale? Yes, I am. Good, good. That always makes things so much easier for everybody involved. Let me go take a walk on the beach while she finishes up. Ah, uh, you go ahead. Now, Chris, I love this place. I might even buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it weren't for the memories, right? That's why I'm getting rid of it. I know, it just doesn't seem right, Cruz. I mean, this place is you. You know, I just can't imagine you not living here where you guys had some... I'm sorry. It's your decision, I know. It's not easy, I'll tell you, Kel. I never thought I'd leave here. I figured Eden and I would live here till we were too old to pick up the shells on the beach. 
Gers, I know how painful it is to remember what you two had. But maybe someday those same memories will be comforting. You know, I know it's hard to believe. I hope so. But tonight I'm gonna be sleeping with a ghost. And I gotta quit doing that. Or it's gonna break me. Excuse me, if you don't mind my saying so, it is a little untidy, Mr. Castillo. Just like a new car, a clean and shiny house is much easier to sell. Oh, by the way, I found this in the sink. Also, when I have the open house, I always like to have coffee brewing and bread baking. You'd be really surprised to see how well people respond to those comforting aromas when they come in the door. Now, I can clear my agenda for this coming Sunday if you wouldn't mind signing these papers for me today. Could you leave, please? Beg your pardon? I'd like you to leave. Uh, but I haven't seen the bedrooms, Mr. Castillo, and uh, I'm certain there won't be any problems, but if you want to rush things and you'll... I want you out of my house now, lady. Step right this way. What is it you don't want to talk about? Mm, nothing. <laughs> Obviously, you've had a much better day than I have. How can you tell? Well, only by that smile and that glow and this feeling that I get that you're about to tap tap on this table. As a matter of fact, I am. I have wonderful news, and I, I just want to share it with you and get your opinion. Boy, don't keep me in suspense. Okay. You read the science page. You know about the new discovery, the new Mayan discovery that Dr. Harding has made in Guatemala? Well, I knew he was down there with a couple other big league archaeologists. Well, it is a big deal. And the museum has asked me to fly down there and try to buy one of the jade figures that uh, Dr. Harding has discovered and unearthed and, and bring it back here for our collection. No wonder you're so excited. That's wonderful. Yeah? When do you leave? Uh, this afternoon. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> I, I guess that's the reason they asked me, because they know they, I, I'm the only one crazy enough to go on that short notice. Well, what are you doing sitting here with me? You should be home packing. I want to ask Caroline if she'll go with me. What, what do you think? I think that's sweet. And I think she'd love to go. E even on such short notice? I don't believe me. My mother's always thrilled by spur-of-the-moment invitations to Guatemala. Oh, she gets them every day, Oh, huh? yeah. Well, she's turned on all the rest. <laughs> believe me, I'm sure she'll want to go. And I sure want her to go. You do, huh? Yeah. I really think it's time the two of you got back together again. Oh. Uh, you, you know what's amazing about you and I? That, that we both know what, what, what is uh, fitting and proper. Because that's exactly what I think. Now this. See, this firm is the most promising, I think. Hey, uh, this Sundrex setup here seems to be pretty good bet, though. So Mason thought. Mm -hmm. Mason seen this? Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's been doing a bit of uh, checking around of his own, you know. Jeffrey, I get the feeling that something's weighing you down. No, no, it's nothing, really. Look, I know the last couple of days have been very difficult for you. You've directed all of your hostility towards Mason, and now you find out that Cece was the one who destroyed your mother's letters. He's the real villain of this piece. I mean, he could have saved Pamela. It wouldn't have taken all that much of his money to help her, or maybe even find the cure for her. But he didn't. I mean, he turned his back. He might as well have committed murder. Yeah. And he won't get away with it. That's right, he won't. Because once you and I and Mason purchase one of these pharmaceutical companies, We'll be in a position to hurt him financially. I understand that, Alex. You know, but Jeffrey, what the only reason we're doing this is our love for Pamela. She needs some kind of memorial. And we're going to give that to her. Inspector, it's Lindsay Pickett, please. I need to talk to you. Yeah, I'm coming, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. Will you look at this? Where'd that come from? It's a funeral wreath. He left it on my bed. He's gonna kill me. I swear he's gonna kill me. Please, can't you stop him? Lionel, I'm sorry oh, for being oh. so late. You are always worth waiting. Huh? Huh? Yeah. 
Well, I just happen to have an absolutely wonderful excuse. Oh, it was just such a snooze. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Because I have some great news to tell you. Well, let me tell you first. I know that's rude, but I'm just dying to tell you. Mr. Bangston, the chairman of the fundraising committee, mm -hmm. he called me in today to tell me how thrilled he is with the work I'm doing. As well he should. No, but I know that's not all. Our East Coast alumni are planning this major fundraising event in New York City, and I am going to represent the university. Isn't that just wonderful? In New York? Yeah. Well, when, when, when do you go? Well, it's all kind of sudden. I'm supposed to leave tomorrow, and I, I'll be in New York for about a week. And there's some, you know, several private functions I have to attend, but then I'm hoping to squeeze in some time to catch up with some old friends. Well, uh, that, that's, that's wonderful. I, I, I mean, well, you always said that... That you wanted to manage on your own, and, and uh, now you've done so more than anybody ever could have expected in such a short time. Well, you know, I have to admit, it even surprises me sometimes. Today, when I, when I was in Mr. Bankston's office and he was explaining to me what he wanted me to do, I, I practically had to pinch myself to believe he was talking to me. But, you know, then I realized that I had managed to assume the responsibility of this job, and I've done it very well. No question about it. Well, I guess it's time to put the helpless Southern Bell routine arrest <laughs> my <clears throat> professor has assigned me to interview district attorney Keith Timmons I'm kidding uh, does your prof not know that uh, uh, you and mr. Timmons are not exactly two peas in a pod no, look I tried to explain believe me I tried does he not know that in fact you hate Timmons I mean everybody hates Timmons when I explained to her that there was some friction between us dr. Rafferty said that would make a good interview Good journalists should that learn to be objective and put their personal feelings. Yeah, well, there must be some way out of it. Oh uh, no, my grade depends upon this. Well, I had a chat with Timmons earlier, so uh, maybe I'll go along with you. Didn't you want to kill him? Want to? Huh. I almost did. Good luck. <laughs> you are going to have a very, very successful trip to New York. I can just feel it. Oh, thank you very much. And no matter how busy I am, I will make time to call you. I hope you will. <laughs> oh, you never did tell me your good news. Oh. Oh, the... it's Warren, isn't it? The job, he got that promotion in Denver? As a matter of fact, he did, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll remember to write him a note before I leave. Yeah, once you do that, he'd appreciate it. Yeah. Mm. I sure wish you well. Bye. Bye-bye. Jane, Jane, I'm so excited. I'm going to tell you about my trip. Are you going? Well, of course I'm going. I couldn't pass up something like this. <laughs> well, I didn't think so, but when I just saw Lionel wait, leave... Wait a minute. Had... How do you even know what I'm talking about? Lionel told me this morning. No, but Lionel didn't even know to... But I, I think you ought to tell me what you're talking about. Isn't I'm talking about the trip you and Lionel are taking to Guatemala. Now, what are you doing here? You should be going to get Guatemala? ready. Guatemala? Lionel was going to take me to Guatemala? Let me ask you. No. That's strange. Never seen him so excited about anything. Hey. I need a warrant for a Dr. William Addison. He's uh, going by the alias Wallace Arnold. He's staying at the Del Vista Hotel. Yeah, and why would I want to bring this Addison in for questioning? He did time in Ventura for raping a woman named Lucy Pickett. Now, he's out now. He's threatening uh, revenge. He's talking about killing her. You heard these threats? No, I haven't heard him personally. You have witnesses that know about these threats? Ms. Pickett knows about him. Has anyone talked to this man? I have. He denies it, of course, but I know he's doing it. Lucy Pickett? The Lucy Pickett? The girl who tried her Peter Pan act off the top of the illustrious Capwell Hotel before you stopped that it? That is Lucy beside the point, Keith. This girl is scared to death. <sighs> Cruz, we're all scared in some way or another. She needs protection from this man immediately. Yeah. Now, are you going to bring him in or not? Private citizens who come in here bellyache and give me a bellyache when they expect me to mobilize the entire Santa Barbara Police Department. However, you know, if um, you were a police officer making a real charge, um, it just might cut the cajeta, amigo. You know, 
There is nothing in the world easier for me to do than turn down the opportunity to work with the likes of you again. So nice to be back. Oh, so wonderful to have you back. So one of you could grace us with your presence. Work doesn't start at 2 p.m. I'm sorry, but I had a little personal business to take care of this morning. Oh, look, you tempted did a terrific job. I guess uh, filing and cleaning was her specialty. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry. The appearance of my desk offends your sensibility. However, I'm sure my regular secretary will have it straightened up in a minute. Oh, I wouldn't count on it. See, I don't plan to lift a finger until we get a few things straightened out. Not in the mood. I want to make sure that the next time you send me out on assignment, I am guaranteed better accommodations. What are you complaining about? The motel was a dump. I, well, you should be... You know, I searched high and low to find a combination motel bowling alley. I thought you'd fit right in with those types. Oh, give me a break, Keith. They were a bunch of creeps. Oh, except from that league from Vince's gym. <laughs> the motel, w it was empty. It was just me and the cockroaches. I don't, I don't want to hear you. I just, I don't bust my chops, you know? I got problems of my own. Oh, what problems could Keithy have? This job for one. You're ready to kill to get this job back. No, but I don't make enough money. I want to make the big bucks. I got power, but no money. It sucks. Oh, tell me about it. You know how little I make? I mean, it's a joke, only I'm not laughing. <laughs> At least not yet. What? What? What do you mean, what? No, what? What? You got that look on your face. What? There is no look. Ah, oh, come on! That's that look. It's the Gina's up to something look. The freak occurrence that you can't hide of that brain actually having an idea. Oh, great. Insult me. That's, that's a wonderful way to get on my good side. What are you doing? Tell me. No. There's nothing huh? to tell. There's nothing. No, don't, tell don't, me. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You, I, no. I won't stop. I won't stop. I won't stop. You always tell me, but I can't break the brain. And so you tell me, yes, stop. but you're, I, you're I'm desperate. I want to hear your hair brain scream. Stop. <laughs> Whoa! That's right. enough. Okay. I've had it. All right. Tickling didn't work. How about groveling? Try it. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> so, okay. I, 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 uh... Uh, please, please, share with me your innermost thoughts. I, who am not worthy to... I'm not worthy How about to, a little love? A little worshipping? I know, I know, some real beseeching. That might help. No, do Stop me. Tell me. Tell, tell me. Right, right. All right. Part of my private business that I was taking care of this morning involved a little trip to Dr. Nicholas's lab. And while I was there, Jeffrey Conrad came racing in talking about a takeover of a pharmaceutical company. A pharmaceutical company? Mm -hmm. You mean THE pharmaceutical company? The one that's going to be responsible for the delivery and manufacturing of all Dr. Nicholas's miracle vaccine? That pharmaceutical company? Well, I can't see what else they'd be so excited about. Hey! <laughs> We're in the money! money. We're, We're in, in the money. money! Wait a second! What pharmaceuticals? They don't sell generic stocks yet. I don't know. I didn't hear the name. What? You gotta go. Well, what? Why? I want you to go. I, I thought we were gonna play kissy, and yes, then we were we'll, gonna we'll, dance we'll, we'll and play kissy, tickle. and we'll play tickle, and we'll play dance. I'll even supply whipped cream. I'll even supply peanut butter. But first, I want you to go over to Dr. Nicholas's lab and get all the information you can. Whipped cream and peanut butter? Uh, listen, I appreciate you seeing me, Warden. I'm Inspector Castillo from the Santa Barbara PD. How can I help you, Inspector? Yeah, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about an inmate named, uh, William Addison. Uh, yes, I believe he was paroled last week. Um, Addison. Yes, here he is. He served, uh, ten months of his term and then was released nine days ago. Model prisoner. Yeah, I'll bet. That was an assault beef, right? Yeah, that's correct. Well, has it occurred to anybody around here that that guy could still be dangerous? Uh, I don't think anything in this file indicates that. As I told you, uh, he's a model prisoner. Are you having problems with Addison? The man just moved to Santa Barbara, which is where the woman he raped is now living. He took up residence in a hotel under an alias, uh, Wallace Arnold. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Maybe he's trying to avoid publicity. 
Well, it seems to me there could be other reasons, too, don't you think? Well, as long as he hasn't falsified documents or used his alias for fraud, I... I don't see how I can help you out in this. Maybe you ought to talk to your parole officer. Well, I... Listen, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, Inspector... Could you sign the out sheet for me, please? You guys run a tight ship. Bud? Let me see. Right? What was his name again? Castillo. Huh. He didn't put his badge number down here. Hello? Goodbye, Lucy. You, hey, listen, if you're to complain about Brick again, forget I'm it. I'm here to I'm interview not... you. Interview? What, you're the girl from USB? I mean, <laughs> the lovely Jane Wilson? They told you my name. Oh, listen, if they told me your name, I wouldn't have forgotten. I'm telling you, the girl that came in here all fired up, complaining about Brick, I mean, she, you know, the confrontation must have impressed you as much as it impressed me. I mean, why would you be here? My professor gave me this assignment, Mr. Timmons. Oh, hey, no need for such formality. I mean, I call you Jane, you can call me Tarzan. <laughs> It's neither. It's not funny. You know, usually I'm witty in a sort of vulgar sort of way, but I guess you know, having such a beautiful interviewer sort of has me off balance. Here, sit, 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 sit. Sit. And, and can I get tea? Anything? Grand Monier? Nothing, thank you. Do you type? Yes. Do you take shorthand? Some. Well, you see, the bimbo that's my secretary here and takes care of my office did all this. I was wondering if you could come here. I'm not and sort of here put for a job, away, Mr. Timmons. Like, could we please get along with this interview? Aloof. Drives me crazy. Go ahead. You can ask me anything. And I mean anything. Just ask. Do you consider this a rewarding job? Well, you know, when I... To tell you, that when I think about keeping Santa Barbara Street safe for the citizen, I, I get a twinge of pride. What kind of twinge do you get when you put an innocent man in jail and leave him there? <laughs> now, you see, we make all kinds of mistakes, you know, at all levels of government. And the thing is, the one thing you hope is the safeguards will cover up the fact that, you know, uh, you're not going to put an innocent man in jail. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, 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 we're overstaffed, underworked, and um, like I told Brick, I mean, I didn't gather the evidence. So, um, <laughs> justice prevailed, he's free, and... What's the beef? Uh, do you have any future plans? I, uh, I'm free tonight. What, what do you got in mind? I was referring to your political aspirations. Well, I was referring to my pillow talk aspirations. I need to talk to you, Timmons. <laughs> I want! Why don't you ever learn not to barge in here without being invited? I mean, if I was lucky, you could have come in in an embarrassing situation. I just got through talking to the warden in Ventura about that guy Addison. Yes, I know. He called up to find about your status in the police department. I could have iced you, but I covered for Does it. Does that mean you're gonna bring him in? Oh, well, all right. Listen, we have to terminate this interview, but I'd like to continue it over dinner tonight. No, it really would be better if we just wrapped it up here in the office. You know what, that'd be just peachy, but you know, the only time I have is tonight, and I have to eat, so what about the Orient Express? Eight o'clock. Uh, Johnny's at seven. All right. For God's sake. This is a bad man. Genuine. He is terrorizing an innocent girl. It's not her imagination, it's not mine. You have proof of that? He's got a vendetta against her, Keith. She put him in, in jail. I have a vendetta against you all my life, so what? So you've got to protect her. You... I'm going to give you a piece of advice here, you know? I mean, I don't have to protect her, and you have to stop running roughshod over people doing private investigations, okay? I mean, until you pick up your badge and leave here. Because otherwise, what do we have? We have people taking the law into their own hands. And what's that? Cruz! That's <laughs> anarchy. The people wouldn't have to take the law into their own hands if the people whose job it was to enforce the law would do it. And since you're obviously incapable of taking the steps necessary to protect this girl, I will. This 
day is never gonna end. I know it. I just know it. What are you complaining about? I would have thought you had plenty of sleep considering how late you were in this morning. You know, I, I had to deal with the models and covering for you with Osborne. Oh, uh, you're a saint. What else can I say? Hmm? Uh, that, that, Tom, that's it. Thanks. Uh, we, I think we've got all we need. Well, I'd really like to get just a couple more using the product if we can. Sure. I want something just like, um... Let, let me show you real quick, maybe. Holding it just so they see. Maybe just something like this, and maybe just with the hair. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Good. Okay. That's great. Right. Thanks, guys. Um, sure. uh, thank you for coming. We'll let you know right. as soon as we know. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Tom, we, we're going to need those back as soon as possible, all right? Bye. All right, Jeffrey, as you'll have them. Great. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I think I've finally seen what we've had in mind all along. You really think she's the one? Uh, not her, not her. You. Me? You're perfect for it. You have the perfect look. Wait a minute. I am running this thing. I'm not starring uh, Listen to me. I promise you, Kelly, you're absolutely perfect for it. But I'm not a model, Jeffrey. But what do you mean you're not a model? You should have seen yourself just now. Listen, it is very different, you know, demonstrating when no one's around and when you're behind it. Come on. Oh, Kelly, just, just, just humor me, all right? Now, now, give us a shot right now, give okay? Give a shot. Modeling. Now, come on. You know what it is. I know you're out give of your mind. No, no, I'm not. Mr. There's not a photographer when right. I make faces in front of you. No, you're doing poses. You're not making faces. I trust you're having a wonderful day? Uh, not particularly. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe it'll brighten up soon. Any word from Mason? No, no, not yet. Jeffrey, look, obviously something's bothering you, and it's more than just a bad day at the office. I just can't deal with it anymore, Alex. You know, for months, I've kept myself from becoming too close to Kelly because Mason was my sworn enemy. Now, here I am. I'm plotting against her father, and it's the same damn thing. Do you love her? Yeah. I think I do. Sometimes. I, then I start thinking of her father and what he's done. I tell you, it just, it just starts to get crazy, you know? Jeffrey, look, you do love her. Listen to me, there are very few times in a man's life that he is lucky enough to find someone that he can really love. Your mother. Your mother was that woman in my life. Except I let her slip away. I didn't fight Cece for her. Even though I knew in my heart that we really belonged together. I also knew that Cece would have hurt her in the end. But what did I do? I immersed myself in my work and I just let her go. You love Kelly, and Kelly loves you very, very much. Now, whatever you do with your life, all right, don't let that love get away. Lucy! Hey. Addison knows I'm here. He, he found me. He called me here. What? 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 what he was in here. He's yeah, in my no, house. No, he wasn't here. He called me. He what called he, me here. What did he say? He said, he said goodbye, Lucy. He's gonna kill me, Inspector. I know no, he's gonna come kill here, come me. Here. That's no matter not where true. I go, That's he's finding true. me. No, 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 no. I'm gonna get that. Listen, I'm gonna take you back to the Capitol House now. Come on. Yeah, I can't go, go back no, there. Come he on, was come there. On. He was on Listen, the ground. I know, I know that. That's why you have to promise me that you're not gonna be alone there, not for one minute. Ted and Haley are there. I'll speak to Rosa. I'll speak to the security. Okay. Someone will be with you the whole okay. time, all right? Okay. okay. All right, let's go. I thought you should know some hot-headed cop was in here asking some questions about you. Might be a good idea for you to lay low. What? Is he from Santa Barbara? Yeah. Some Mexican guy uh, named Castillo. Yeah, thanks for the warning, bud. 
I'm not gonna let Castillo be a problem. I can't afford a problem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Central American flight number 871, service to Guadalajara, with continuing service to Oaxaca and Guatemala City, is preparing for takeoff. Please return your seats to an upright position and make sure your seatbelts are tightly fastened. Your seatbelt, sir. Such a long flight. I hope my charming traveling companion doesn't choose to ignore me the whole way. <laughs> Carol! I hope you don't mind my tagging along. Mine? <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't want to go without you. Well, here I am. Well, wait a minute. What, what happened to your job, your trip? Well, hey, there are two or three other people can handle that. Besides, when I thought about it, I knew it wouldn't be any fun without you there. In fact, as much as I love my job, without you there, it just doesn't mean a darn thing. I oh. am so happy to see you. Somehow, when you said dinner, this place didn't just jump into my mind. <laughs> well, you'll have to forgive me, Gina. I, I know this is not the kind of place a woman like yourself is accustomed to. But the university has been dragging me off to so many posh, pretentious restaurants, I really just needed a place to relax and, and be comfortable. And you know, this is the first time since you left that I've actually been out spending time with someone that I wanted to be with, someone that I, I care about, someone that I really enjoy. There's nothing. I, you sure you wouldn't prefer a, a classier place? No, I like it here. Brick, could you show us a, a quiet little table in the corner? Uh, uh, What's the matter with that? Ah, uh, see, they're, they're all reserved. I, I, well, uh, I, I like this table here. Huh? Nice. Uh, this too. Cash. What? Your credit cards have been rejected before, remember? I want cash. Uh, let's see, we, we were talking about my dreams and aspirations. No, I was asking about your political plans for the future. Well, why don't we relax a little bit and give you, you know, an insight into me personally. God forbid. Garcon? Sui? Yes, sir! What will it be? <laughs> I, uh, bottle of your best champagne. I should apologize in advance for whatever the best is going to be. Thirty-four dollars. What? For the champagne, thirty-four dollars. Fine. Yeah? Yeah. Well, cash in advance. What? Boss's orders. I... But here, this will cover the whole dinner, all right? Thanks for the tip. Well, why don't we talk about you? I told him I couldn't possibly stay in New York and assist him in his latest experiments, even though what he had to say was really... What's wrong? Um, nothing. I just saw the gentleman that I work with. He's with a very young girl. She's too young even for him. What was I saying? <laughs> I think you'd finish. About your political plans. I right, sh champagne first. I <clears throat> Come in right up, sir. <clears throat> yeah! Ah! Oh, I, I call yourself a waiter, you pseudo hippie. Oh no, no, I'm not. I'm not. Moron! I'm not a waiter, sir. No, no, I'm, I'm just an oyster shucker. That's all. Fine. 
Can I have a chair? Let's let's not let that intrude on our evening. Let's see. Uh, here's to uh, here's to our budding acquaintance and whatever comes. Was Jeffrey so excited about this morning? Whatever it was, it sounded quite no, fascinating. No, no, I don't want to talk about business. I really want to hear a lot more about you. You see, I always thought that Governor Timmons had a nice ring to it, or I, President Timmons isn't bad, huh? Is there anyone in politics you choose to emulate? You see, I always thought of myself as a combination of uh, Gandhi and, and President <clears throat> Nixon. Uh, you know, uh, Ron has Nancy, Dick has Pat, Franklin had Eleanor, and, uh, I need a good woman of my side. What about you? Hmm? Uh... What? Wh why don't you just get a tattoo? What is it now? Can't believe the way he's pawing that girl. Are we gonna spend the whole evening talking about Timmons? Oh, hi. Are you jealous? No. Just like a little more attention paid to me. How about all of my attention? That sounds a lot better. You make me feel so special. I never really thanked you. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. I, I, I thought the, uh, the egg roll was a bit soggy I'm myself. I'm not talking but... about the food. I know you're not. But I thought for a second they were about to get all serious on me. Well, I may have to, just for a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been patient and so good to me since Eden's death. I mean, I know I'm never going to get over losing her, but just having you around sort of made it bearable, you know? I know that you and Mason have settled your differences. I'm just happy. Yeah. You haven't read your fortune cookie. You will meet strange Englishmen and have wild adventure. <laughs> Get out of here. What is this? <laughs> you are a very loving and trusting person. What else is new? Let me read George. Enjoy. Learn to live. To love. Sounds like pretty good advice to me. Oh. 
Tonight on Roomies, it's a wild, sexy science project for Matt, but can he handle the homework? Followed by amazing stories and the season finale of Miami Vice. Then catch Stingray tonight. <laughs>